thank you thank you abba father thank you father god for having us here today having us all in one accord in the body of christ having us all in alignment lord god thank you for orchestrating conducting instructing this god given fast um thank you for aligning this fast thank you for bringing it forth thank you for confirmation and revelation that you give to us thank you for loving us thank you for being with us Thank you for always being here, Father God. We just approach your throne with grace and boldness. Father God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father God, for the community that we have, the fellowship that we have. We thank you that we can all gather here today um, amongst each other, that we can give praises and glory to you because everything, Father God, you take ownership of everything, Father God. You have custody over everything. You have rule, reign, and dominion over everything, Father God. Just let there be light here in this ministry. You said that, Father God, that you are a wall of fire around and about us. You said that you you are protecting us. You said you are protecting us, Father God. He gave me um twelve twelve. Today I kept seeing twelve twelve. I believe yesterday I might have seen twelve twelve also. Um but we just thank God for his confirmation. We just thank him for going before us in every situation. We just thank him that, thank Him for vindicating us because we know that it, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. We know that we are not fighting alone, that we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost fighting for us. What more can we ask for? Mommy, he me. never leaves Mommy, us. Can you me. give her something? Give her, y'all had, please, somebody... <laughs> We thank you, Father God, that you never fail us. We 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 walk away. We walk away. We run away. We ignore you. We rebel. We rebel as humans in our fleshly carnal ways. We forget about you. We forget the things that you do for us. But we repent. We repent today and we ask that you forgive us because your word never fails. Your word is living. Your word is active. Even in these marriages, Father God, that you have called forth these women, these standards, these warrior women, these God-ordained women, these spouses, the women of God who have been in alignment, who have been in waiting, the standards, the faithful, the holy, the pure in heart, the clean in heart. They know that they are not perfect, God, but they are made perfect through you and you, Lord God. We just thank you. We give you all the glory. We glorify you in these marriages. We glorify you here in these ministries as leaders, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we can just sit still, Father God, and we can be the students, that we can be taught, that we can have a listening ear. We thank you, Lord God, for opening the ears and the eyes of the blind. We thank you for healing the sick and the lame. We thank you, Father God, that your sheep know your voice. We know your voice, Father God, and the stranger's voice we will not follow. We thank you, Father God. He has repeatedly given us Psalms 91 and Psalms, Psalms 91 and Psalm um, 23. He has been showing, showing that and highlighting that over and over. God has repeatedly given us numbers on repeat for confirmation, for miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders. Today, he gave us Proverbs, what did I say? Proverbs 21, 19. Um, Proverbs 19, 21. I'm sorry, I got it backwards. There are many plans in a man's heart, which can be poor, which can be unpleasing to God. But never, nevertheless, and this is in King James Version, this, this part of the scripture, but the Lord's counsel, the Lord's will, his stand and prevail but it is the lord's counsel that will prevail that will stand it is god that has dominion and control over which way that your spouse will go and we just pray that our spouses that our husbands have the clear mind that they are not hearing the voice of a stranger the voice of the wicked, the enemy's voice, that they get in full agreement, that they get in full alignment, and they follow your instructions, that they follow your plan. Because, Father God, you are more powerful. You are the one that can take the heart of the man and turn it. You are the one that can soften their heart. 
unless God put judgment in the wrath and they had to go through their wilderness and their judgment, that they had to feel the pain, that they had to make these men of God, your husbands, uncomfortable where they are. Because that's not the plan of God for their life. These men are a part of the 144,000. That's why God keeps highlighting 144. He keeps highlighting 144. These men of God, these husbands, these kingdom spouses, not only the women of God are called and they have a purpose and an assignment but these men are special as well these men has callings and an assignment on their lives these men are chosen these men of god that god has assigned women of god to your lives to stand in the gap for is not in vain your prayers and the wait the year after year it's not in vain. God has called you to this. This is your instruction. This fast. God has said this is a broad fast. It wasn't only for just me. Because I, I seen what was happening in my life just recently in the snap of a finger. And I'm like, the serpent is speaking to us. The serpent is speaking to the men and the standards, the women of God, the queens. The righteous wives and he is speaking to the men of God. He is speaking to the men. The serpent is trying to whisper lies to these men. Trying to pull them back and keep them stagnant and stuck in sin. He's trying to keep them bound to counterfeits. Counterfeits that only want what is not good for them. The, the, the counterfeits that only want what they think is right. But it is God's plan that will prevail. God is giving these, God want these men in their rightful place, in their rightful mind. And is not with the count, with not with Jezebels and counterfeits out here in the world. Where will, where they will receive destruction to their life. Turmoil. The counterfeit job was to keep them bound, keep them in sin. They won't get to know God. They won't walk in the fullness of everything God has gifted them and given them. Where they forget about God. They forget about God. They forget who gave them, who orchestrated it all, who aligned it all, who gave them the gifts, the promises. Because God's will for us is to walk into the promised land and to have peace, have love, have joy, have happiness. But it also is for us to learn from our mistakes. And sometimes being with the counterfeit is the mistake that some of the men and women have to learn to move forward. To be better for their God ordained. So they can be that so they can be that upright in heart, that pure in heart. So they can be a match made in heaven. This is a match made, a perfect couple that God created, that God put together. Yes, I can hear the enemy telling me, oh, she's just a beautiful woman. She, there's plenty of men out there for her. I mean, while I was getting myself ready, I can hear the enemy saying that to me, but... I want what God want. I rebuke you, Satan. I want what God want. I want what God have, get, have chosen for me. According to his will. Because I know God gives good gifts. He gives good things. Jeremiah 29, 11. The plans of God for my life are good and not evil. To give me hope in the future. The gates of hell will not prevail against your life, your assignment, your calling, your destiny. There will be abundance. There will be abundance of joy and rain. And the rain is God showering you, showering you with blessings. Blessings is healing your spiritual gifts, your anointing, moving you forward, moving you into new places, new land, new territory for you to, have, for you to rule over. God is placing you in new territory for you to rule over. Where you tread your feet will be blessed. So God, um, so yes, 1212 me in the shadow protection of two Israelites. And it says Bezalel, 
yeah, Bezalel, something like that. The son of Yuri, the son of Her, and the tribe of Judah. This man was filled with the spirit of God. God put his spirit in him. He gave him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. This person was a workmanship. His job was to be a workmanship and to design, to be an artist, artistic works in gold and silver and bronze. That was his position. God poured out his spirit on these men, on these women. And this is why God is telling us that women of God, that you have to remain consistent. You have to remain covering your husband. He needs your covering and so he comes. It's like when you see it, when God shows you it, protect it. God is saying, he told me last night while I was laying down, this is just training ground. You're operating right now in the obedience and in the instructions. And so the real thing gets here, which is your spouse, which you and the union that he is putting together. He said, this is just training ground. You being obedient, you following instructions. If he tell you to go on immediate fast, you follow through and you go on a fast and you cover your husband. He's showing you things bit by bit and little things to be the wife before you are officially the wife until you are walking down the aisle and God marries you. He's showing you, he's showing you what your husband need. He's showing you there there is some wickedness, some evil taking place. The serpent, they are being attacked right now in this hour. Some of these men, it may not be for all men because everybody is in different seasons, different hours, different chapters. But some men are, are being blinded and God is saying he's taking the veil off. There is about to be an un uncovering of the veil. Like there's about to be an exposure. The men are about to see what's real and what's fake. What's the counterfeit, the counterfeit money and what's the real money. God is also opening their hearing. So God also led me to the number 2111, 2111, and it, that means to tremble, to quake in Hebrews. And then in Greek, it also means, in Greek, strong concordance, it also means well-placed, ready, ready for use, suitable fit, useful. So he took us to Habakkuk 2-7, and I got this number off of... Um, a price. I had purchased, went to the grocery store and I had got, gotten watermelon. And as I'm putting the groceries, groceries away and I'm just sitting there, I look up and the price was twenty one eleven, And it just like, the light bulb went off and it was like, look this up. This, this is something God is speaking, speaking to us about. And then under under it, it was Habakkuk 2.7. And then it was Esther 5.11, where Esther was preparing to be in front of the king, preparing a feast for the king. And, and, and in that chapter, let me see. Because God is, this is the, God is preparing a feast. And the members and the people, the, the family, the friends and whoever, for everybody to be there. The people he had called to be there. There are some people that God don't even want you to, to want you want them to fall off and you to disconnect yourself from. This is why the promise of your kingdom spouse is weary, is falling and not coming together, is not open. It's not open because you weren't obedient and let go of people that you thought you supposed to be in connection with. You weren't obedient hearing the father's voice. You you went your own way. You did what you ignored it. You thought that you needed the group, but God wanted you alone and by yourself. Because when you get in that marriage, you don't have a group unless he leads you to fellowship. But in some cases at that perfect, at that 
moment God wants it to just be you and your kingdom spouse because it's too many ears. It's too many fake people, falsehood. It's too many lies and deception. God wants you to specifically only hear from him. It's too much noise. It's too loud. That's why God is saying he's opening the ears that these men is, 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 having the air to hear we are us women is having the air to hear god our eyes the veil is coming off we are knowing right from wrong god keeps pulling up um judge righteously so appropriate you judge righteously judge appropriately through his word as you are led by the holy spirit only and, and a lot of times that's cutting everything out. Social media, phone calls, distractions. Because that's what these men, these men of God are being distracted. And God is God is um, causing them to remove their self from friends that cannot go to the next chapter of their life. The, the transformation, the, tra the change in their lives, God is calling them away from people, places, and things brothers and sisters exes god is calling them away so first i'm gonna go to because i'm on still here on isaiah isaiah 43 12 i wrote this in the community tab i have revealed and saved and proclaimed i and not some foreign some foreign god among you i'm not a fake god i'm not those little gods I am the big almighty. I'm the, I am that I am. I am the beginning and the end. The first and the last. There is no God after me. I am the one and only living God. This God, the blood of Jesus, this God that we serve, Jesus Christ, our father, God, Lord, and savior is the one that made heaven and earth. The one that said, let there be light. And there was light. The one that created Adam and Eve, the first marriage. This is the God we serve because his blood is active. When we, we, when we announce his name, when we use his name, which is not in vain, things move, things shift, things change. Us women of God, we are here to change the atmosphere. You change the atmosphere in your spouse's life. Oh, the moment you lift your spouse up in prayer. Oh, the moment you go into intermission fast, fasting on their behalf, standing in the gap for them. Closing spells, rituals, and chants. You shut it down. It's game over. Game over for Satan and his minions. Game over for these demons, these counterfeit witches. Game is over. You shut the mouths of the enemy. He is beneath you. Because God has given you as a woman, as Ruth, as Esther. God has been speaking a lot about Esther that a lot of you are in is, is Esther. You have walked in your Esther. God has given you dominion to proclaim the good news. You are my witness. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, the leaders that he has raised up, the prophets that he has raised up, the, and even the newcomers that God has given ministry to. God has told some of you to create a channel, to open up a building. This is the building. This is the body of Christ. You don't always have. Is Yes, I, I, I admit, I do. Going to church, you need to go to church. If you are led to go to certain churches, depending how he leads you and wants you to. But if he don't, he won't because you are the church. The church is in your heart. Sometimes you can go to churches and they deceive you. Where there are where where some people depend on the pastor for everything. That they only read the word when the on Sunday. That is just it's just a routine to them. It becomes a routine. And God speaks about that in his word also. I believe it's in Revelations. It just becomes a regular routine. This is something I have to get up and do. This is something the family does. But it's not in your heart. Because when you leave, you're not walking in his likeness. When you leave, they don't recognize you. They don't see the glory and the light on you. 
No one can deliver out of my hand. No one can deliver out of God's hand. When I act, who can reverse it? When God act in these men's life, when he act in these marriages, when he has delivered your kingdom spouse, when there has been breakthrough from that serpent spirit, from lust and perversion, from idolatry, idolatry of money. God spoke about that too today. Greed. That's what he spoke about, I believe, in Habakkuk too. Being greedy, greed. They are only, some of them are only with the counterfeit because of the money, because of money. They are not used to women of God serving God and submitting to God, submitting to a man, submitting to the spirit of God, to the spirit of the Lord. They are used to maybe some of the women wearing the pants. They are used to the ordinary day to day because this is how some of us was raised getting up going to work go to work but god is changing things god is doing a new thing the new thing that god is doing is coming from coming from amongst these buildings these places these businesses and starting your own and it's not for everybody some people some people god still has working it's not for everybody but it's when he because when if God has called you out of a thing, if he has given you provision, he will provide in that land and that place. His provision may be instructions, day-to-day -day instructions. We live by faith and not by sight. We are here to spread the gospel, the good news, and to glorify him in all that we do. We glorify him with our husbands, speaking life and breathing life into our husbands. And that's why he wanted us to on this fast. This fast is to break the spells, the curses. The, this, this fast is for us to get into alignment, into agreement with God and his plan. To break the curses, to open up the lines of communication with your spouses. So you can hear from God. So that's what he said there. Um... Yeah, right here in Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. So we asked God to let there be light, and there was light. We asked him, let there be light over this over this church, over this ministry, over the body of Christ. During this fast, let there be light, light of instructions, light of clarity. In the name of Jesus, let there be light in the minds of our spouses. Give them the spiritual hearing and the spiritual eyes to see correctly, to come for their come. In their rightful positions, their rightful place as husbands in the kingdom of God, back to their original selves, where they're they're not mentally in torment and mental imprisonment, where they are not bound with Jezebels, where they are not submitting to Jezebels. Come from up, up amongst them. Come from up amongst them, you wicked spirits. We cast you out. We cast you down. We cast you into the lake of fire. God showed me how someone has a dial, a counterfeit. There's a counterfeit that has a dial. I can literally hear them saying that they have a dial. He answered me. He answered me. There's a dial, so meaning there's a voodoo dial. But God is going to deal with them. Vengeance is God. He's going to destroy it. He said in... Did I write it here? He said Hebrews 12 29 For our God is a consuming fire around and about me. He is a consuming fire around your spouse. They have to get, go through God. It, it won't, it's not gonna penetrate. They may think it's gonna work, but the gates of hell, the, the those demonic spirits, the spirit of darkness witchcraft is going to collapse it's going to fall it's going to fall it's going to fall it's going to fall it's going to die it's not even going to penetrate you
because God is a wall of fire around the righteous, the pure in heart. He knows your heart. He knows the forgiving heart that you have. <laughs> he knows you are upright and blameless. He knows that you're not perfect, that you, you once walked in sin, but you're walking by faith and not by sight. He know you've done things in your past, but he know you are a changed person. And he knows that the enemy tries to tempt you. The enemy tries to tempt you in that marriage to argue with your spouse for there to be fr friction and confusion, the back and forth. So they can go back to what was. So they can say that you are, you are just, you are just like the counterfeit. You are just like where I came from. But no, the spouse see that you are different. They see that you love them, that you respect them, that you honor them. They like that soft, gentle, quiet spirit. That is That attracts them. They love, let me tell you what they really love. They don't know it yet, but some do. That it's the spirit of God that's in you, that dwells in you. You're filled with the spirit of the Lord. They can't shake that. It's constantly, it's a tug. It's a tug of war of the darkness, of fake things, the Jezebel spirit, Vashti. And then it's the spirit of the Lord, that beautiful glowing angel that God created. A beautiful person that's within you. That always has been there since you was a little girl. You wear your heart on your sleeves. You are quick to forgive. You are quick. You want to love. And sometimes that leads to hurt. But God has given you tough skin. God has removed those wicked people, family members, mothers, fathers, cousins, brothers, sisters. He has removed those people because they can't come. They can't sit at the table. They can't sit at the table. There's a birth taking place new things somebody is people are giving birth spiritual birth and babies the marriages these births god gave me 188 a new birth taking place so again yeah the unveiling the unveiling is 343 in Strong's Concordance. And that was confirmation for many of us that the veils that they about to be able to see clearly and be able to follow the proper instructions. God also gave us 119 and that says to show blood red in the face, flush, turn rosy. So there's about to be like, they're about to be fluttered and flustered with like blushing, just blushing these men of God when they see you, when the veil comes off, it's called made red and ruddy. God is doing what he said he's going to do. His word does not return back to him void. As long as you don't throw in a towel and you don't give up. That's why he wants us to look to him. Focus on him. God, God had to redirect our focus. That's what he wanted me to put in the community for yesterday, the first day of the fast today, throughout this fast, throughout every day, every day. Don't look on the things on the outer appearance. We walk by faith and not by sight. He want the people that's walking in submission to God. He want us to look to the light, him, for him to shine a light on these things. That do not look, do not look at what you see in the natural because it could look ugly. It can be a distraction of the enemy. Wants to pull you in a different direction. It's counterfeits. It's noticing you because they, because the veils have been off. The spirit of rejection has been, is off of you. Because you smell like a wife, you look like a wife, they are glazing at you with their eyes. They see you, they're looking at you up and down because you are glowing. You have the spirit of the Lord on you. So they are, they're coming, they're, they see you now. 
but that don't mean that that's your spouse. You want what God chose for you. You want the man that God has for you. Why would I want anything else? Why would I choose on my own by my own flesh, by my own strength, a man when God said this is one this one is coming forth? He wants you to just it's the whole thing is just trusting and believing that it's gonna take place, that it's already happening because it is already happening. God is not gonna start something and not finish it. You have been graced to marry that man of God. No, no other woman is graced to put up with your spouse and his assignment, his calling, the calling on your life. Any, anything, any exes, counterfeits that they could possibly be with, God is, God is not in it at all. There is no spirit of the Lord in that. Everything is like being pulled off their own strength in those in those kind of counterfeit relationships. God did not call them in those marriages or those friendships or those relationships with those women. God is pulling them away. God is removing them, uprooting them. It will not stand. It will not work with the witchcraft and the spells and word curses and manipulation and control. We are not Jezebels. Once we crossed over, once we changed over our lives, once we stopped going to clubs and smoking and drinking, God created us. There's the, the new birth, the recreation in us that God has always knew that we would be. <laughs> God always knew that, that he pulled us. He tugged on us. He knew when we would get tired of the worldly things and being people pleasers. Now we please the father. We walk in his likeness, the rebirth. It won't work with counterfeits because they were not graced for the position to be with your spouse. They can't handle the assignment. They can't handle the forgiveness, the humbleness, removing pride, arrogance, and ego. Your gentle spirit, your soft spirit. You letting your husband lead. You, you, you informing your spouse what is right, what is wrong. God leads you to speak to your spouse, to pour into your spouse, to give them scripture. But not being overwhelming of scripture just know your boundaries know when god is leading you to open up the door for the phone call and the text messages or the emails or the social media however he leads you to get in touch with your spouse but god led me when god opened up the door for me um and my kingdom spouse to communicate um my community my spouse reached out to me and I believe I was in prayer that day. I was even in a fast those weeks and those days. And, and, and I wasn't even sure was I supposed to answer or not. But my, my kingdom spouse was a mess. A mess. It was the spirit of death, meaning like spiritually, they were, he was just, you know, just distraught, like, when you look at it, you could just see the darkness and just hurt and pain and anger and just tired. And it took for and it even took for sometimes something to happen. Something happened to a family member and, and, and that wasn't the reason why, but God probably put it on their spirit, put it on their heart. It's your prayers that shifts and change the atmosphere, the spirit of tongues, the fasting. You being obedient, every move, every move is activation of a blessing, of a of of a breakthrough, of a curse being destroyed. Another thing God did lead me not to go in depths and too much. You can get them a snack. You can give them a snack in the fridge. Get them a yogurt. Give them a yogurt in the door. On the door. Um. 
In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, for covering us. I thank you, for Lord God, for orchestrating this ministry, this channel. I think I said the, the white one. Even the apple, if you want to give them, give them the blue and white one. That's in there. Um, he opened up the door for us to meet halfway. To meet. To meet in person halfway. I had to meet my spouse halfway. Do you want that? Or you can give them cookies. Yeah, go ahead. These yours. He wants to wrap them. Is he probably cold? Does he want one of those? Offer him one and see if he, he would like. No, I don't. I don't. Watch, see if it's something else. A snack. You can look in the basket for a snack in there. Um, in the cabinet. I hope you all can see me. Good. Um. So, don't don't think how the world thinks that a men always have to come to you because even if you was in the world and you were out dating and someone that you that you don't know you don't know them at all and you meet them you get you exchange phone numbers and they want to take you out they want to see you again are you going to get do you really honestly now today want to get in that person's car do you trust that person enough to take you out on this date and not leave you stranded so God is allowing and God wants you to get out of your mind that the person is just only going to come to you. God, some of you, you will be meeting your spouse halfway. You will be meeting your spouse outside somewhere. And that's why he wants your mind to always be fixed on him. Not a group of people, a group of females, not your friends, not exes, not your mom or your dad. Because God is leading you to meet with your God ordained husband. And you will know him by the fruit. You will know who they are. And over and over, God will confirm to you. He will not just lead you astray and leave you confused about who the person is. And that's if you are ready. If you are ready mentally, physically, emotionally. God wants us to remove, move with jealousy. He wants us to break off the spirit of jealousy, um, envy, hatred, hurt, and hurt from past relationships. Because those those are things that come up will come up is going to come up in conversations in your marriage. Some of those things, those ways, those traits from the past, or how how men in the past may have treated you, which you allow. But he will have y'all meet because it's breaking demonic curses and demonic spirits that people, the hindering bloodline curses from fathers and mothers. And make, God may not want the person to come to you in that way, but y'all are meeting halfway. Like Esther and Ruth, they were in the field where the husband, where their husbands were. Where the kings were. They were in the field with the kings, with the men. Ruth was in the field with Boaz. Esther, she was brought to the king and he found favor. Even right there in Ruth 5. Um, I'm no, I'm sorry, Esther. Esther 5. 5 1. There's going to be a meeting. There's going to be a meeting with you and your you and your spouses. And these men are ready to show you kindness. Are ready to to cherish you and to love you. In some cases, in a lot of cases, they really are they really had that kind of heart cuz they are a mirror of you, honestly. They're not a mirror of the counterfeit the Jezebel. You already is confident he building, he's building your confidence. You already know. You are confident and know that that is not for your husband, your God or spouse. Those counterfeits, the street, the worldly lifestyle. Come on, Esther. Wait, 
Yeah, I just seen, see, I just seen 2111 or 1211, and that was 1 Samuel. Wait, you know what? Maybe God don't want me in that one. Is the people oh, here we go? See, God didn't want me in that one. It says Esther's pre Esther prepares a banquet. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace. Thank you for for covering us, Lord God. Thank you for being with us. We rebuke you and we bind you, Satan. We loose you into dry places where you will not pro prosper. We cast you out. All forms of witchcraft witchcraft was will fall collapse and die we cancel all forms of witchcraft against our marriages against us in the name of jesus the gates of hell will not prevail it is the lord's way the lord's plan will prevail in our life in our marriages in our destiny in our assignments in our calling here on our ministries on our channel our social media we are covered by the blood of jesus christ everything is covered our minds our hearts are covered by the blood of jesus christ you are covering this channel with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for being a wall of fire around us. God is, God is tearing down any wall of partition that is interfering, the delay of interference. He is breaking those walls of Jerusalem down. He is tearing them down through your prayers and through your fasting however he has led because there's something in this in this fast that from 8 a.m to 8 p.m this fast is something about the number eight new beginnings that he wanted us to go on this immediate fast because god is seeing what is being done to his sons and they need they need peace and they need clarity they need the peace of God. They need God. We need you in this fast, Father God. We need your strength. We can't do these marriages. We can't do anything without you. We can't do our coaching calls. We can't do the business without you. We need you in these prayers. We need you in this word, Lord. We are your daughters. We are your children. and We need you, Lord God. We thank you, Father. Hear ringing. Ringing, ringing in my ears. I know ringing. One of them mean a warning. A warning. One of them mean instruction. I'm not sure which one is which, but there's somebody that knows the answer to that. I forget which one's which. But it says, Robe stood in the inner courts of the king's palace because she put on her royal robes. And the front in front of the king's quarters while the king was sitting on his royal throne inside the throne room opposite the entrance that's how it was read to the to the palace and when the king saw queen esther standing in the court she won favor in his sight just like that out of all the women so that's what god you you won favor whether your spouse know it or not, you are already favored by God. This marriage is already orchestrated and favored by God and it's coming to pass. And it's going to happen swiftly with speed. It's not going to be 10 years. It's not going to be five years. It's going to be within a year y'all come together. Within months. God knows the story. He knows your story. He knows your situation and God is bringing them up out of it. And he held out to Esther the golden scepter he handed her the golden scepter that was in his hand then Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter and the king said to her what is it Queen Esther question mark what is it Queens women of God what is your request make your request known to the king Jehovah Abba Father it shall be given you even to the half of my kingdom. So you are going to get half of everything. You are your other, you are your God ordained husband, your kingdom husband, better half. You are his other half. So you getting everything, everything. You are your husband's and he is yours. Know that. 
recite that in your prayers. And Esther said, if it please the king, let the king and Haman come today to a feast that I have prepared. God is preparing the table, the feast. And many people cannot come. The people that you think can come and show up, the people that you think are going to be your bridesmaids are not. They cannot come. God is not going to allow it. That's one of the reasons why some of these marriages are not coming together. Because God is not allowing you to have some of these females around you. He knows the ending. He knows why. We don't know why. It could be jealousy. It could be their heart. It could be their obedience. They're not following God. They could be really fake. God showed me two women in a dream. They were sitting, sitting next to each other and they had pregnant bellies. And I lift up one of their shirts and they had basketballs under their shirt, basketball. So they were pretending they were faking. They're, they're, they're faking a pregnancy. They're faking a giving birth to something that is not real. God is not going to just, you know, he's not going to just like I seen the dial and the girl saying, I have a dial. It's like she was telling on herself in the room of the spirit. She was out somewhere. I don't know if it seemed like it was some type of, it seemed like a, like a mall maybe, but she was saying it and it's like her friend knows that she has this dial. So to see the company that you keep, bad company corrupts good morals. So she has this dial and the dial was hidden at her mom's or hidden somewhere in the basement. So the dial is not in this woman's um, place, but the dial is somewhere else that she has with my, with, of me, but we rebuke that dial. We cancel that dial. We let the fire God, we let the, let the wrath of God burn down that altar, burn down that aisle, that dial. <laughs> I have prepared for the king. Then the king said, bring Haman quickly so that we may do as Esther has asked. So the king and Haman came to the feast that Esther had prepared. And as they were drinking wine after the feast, the king said to Esther, what is your wish? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to half of the kingdom. Again, he is telling her again. He's reminding her. It shall be fulfilled. Your request, your prayers, women of God, listen to this message today. It shall be fulfilled. Then Esther answered, my wish and my request is if I, if I have found favor in the sight, in the sight of your God ordained husband, the king, God, if it pleases the king to grant my wish and to fulfill, and to fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come to the feast that I will prepare for them. And tomorrow I will do as the king had said. And then it goes on to um, verse nine, Haman plans to hang Mordecai. But that's where God wanted us to stop because your request is being granted. Your request is being fulfilled in this hour. And that's why God, I truly honestly believe God gave us 4-4. I did write that in the community. He gave us 4-4-4 because it's an open door for this fast. God gave me a specific number. And this is for nations. It's for people, thousands, millions of people to do this fast at this time. Some people may have already fasted. But God had maybe saying, and if they didn't, that this was their time to fast. God had probably instructed you, and this was your double, triple, quadruple confirmation to go on the, this fast. Now, after 8 p.m., you can eat whatever you like. You can have you some ice cream and cookies. You know, you know, you might want to eat light because you want to make sure you're hearing from God. You don't want your bellies too full that you're not hearing the right instructions and you're not being led. By God, you are doing good. You will receive a reward by God. God is so merciful. He is so merciful. He is gracious. We just thank him. We need his grace and his mercy. We thank him, Lord God. We thank him for forgiving, for forgiving us. 
just like we forgive our husbands is forgiving get the jealousy out of your heart because god kept saying there's something about jealousy with some of these women y'all have to y'all have to forgive them y'all have to y'all have to remove jealousy and insecurities because there is other women out in the world that is looking and plotting and you have to be in position. God told me to stay in position. That's the word God told me six, seven months ago. To stay in position. And confirmation I got from my spouse that keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Whatever you're doing is working. And sometimes the serpents start whispering, counterfeits and mothers and fathers and whoever Whoever is evil and wicked and demonic, whoever has these unclean spirits, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, full armor of God, keep Ephesians 6, 11. God has given us 6, 11. And 6, 11, that means something else, though. What is 6, 11? Um, because over and over we've been talking about 611. <laughs> it's because, um, you got to stay in alignment and stay in prayer. Um, that's why that's why God said this is training ground because when you see something and you know it's not right, and you see the friction, you see the anxiety, you see things being said and done that you know is not of God. God takes us back to scripture. You, you got to come against it. You got to rebuke it. You got to rebuke the devil and his lies. You got to cut off this ser the serpent head. You got to silence the mouths of the naysayers. Purge and burn it away. Silence their mouths. Cause their tongues to be stuck to the roof of their mouths. Silence them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus silence the mouths of the naysayers. Those wicked spirits that speak in lies to your spouse. May they hear a voice behind them telling them this is the way to go. A stranger's voice. Me, you, and your kingdom spouses, the kingdom wives. A stranger's voice we will not follow. We will hear and follow the voice of the Holy Ghost. And that's staying in our word. Staying in our word. Hearing the word of God. Listening to true prophets of God, leaders, because Father God, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, so it lights us up. It's not going to lead us astray. It's not going to blind us, keep our keep us deaf, dumb, dumb and blind. God is saying, arise, Lazarus. Arise, Lazarus. Breathe on those dry areas of our kingdom husbands, Lord God. Those dry areas. Yeah, God been giving us that 12-12. And he's been highlighting 144,000. We're marked with the blood of Jesus. We're marked. Many of us are marked. He is repeating 144. It's just confirmation. And he said, I don't know if I was listening to somebody. And I seen the number 144 again. Over and over and over this month. Last last month. Yes. Last month of uh, um May. Your husband is a part of the 144,000. They they cannot be joined with the with the darkness. They are with God. And then again, soon as I leave out my door, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God confirms that we are on the right track, we are on the right path, that we are doing what we are told by going on this past, past fast. And he said this wasn't just for me. This was for many other people. So he wanted me to share this. Can you give her cookies or something yeah. what else up there they think she can have because yeah. i'm gonna fix them something when i'm finished with this
some um food, some real food. It's so hard, guys. I gotta tell y'all to have children and be on a fast and you have to feed babies, toddlers. You might accidentally lick your finger. Like I'm telling you, it's it's hard and God knows your story. God knows who you are. He sees you. He sees your struggle and what you have to face day to day. He knows my 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 God orchestrating the line for me to have my twins. He showed me them. He showed me about 10 girls that I was around. He showed me the fertility of of a bunny rabbits. And people that I was around who would be pregnant. They all had babies, us at the same time. So tell me my God is not a man that he shall lie. It might look like a bad thing to people, the world, that you did a bad thing and you had got pregnant out of, but they can say what they want to say, but God aligned and orchestrated it all. God wanted you and your spouse together. When you met, when you met that man, it was already predestined. It wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't by accident. That was God orchestrating the alignment of you meeting your spouse. And it's just times where you weren't ready. They weren't ready. It still needed to be deliverance, healing. People needed to confess things. Get Needed to know who God is first. You want your spouse to know who God is first. And knowing God is, is like knowing them, a mirror of them, a mirror of you. When they get to know who God is, when they start serving God, they begin to start covering you. You see these things. My spouse, my God ordained spouse, because he's not yet my um, husband. But he said, he asked me that I want to be with him. And I know before I never was asked that. But I had to tell the truth. I could have lied and said no and been like prideful or scared of the spirit of rejection at that time. And I said, yes, I do. And he said, start praying. And when I when I brought it up to him not too long ago, um, he kind of said he didn't remember saying that. See how the enemy blinds them. Or they can forget the devil comes in and they can forget things. That's why women of God, your prayers are powerful. I'm telling you are powerful. Don't listen to a ministry that gave up on their kingdom marriage promise. Because it is a lot of work and it's not for the weak. You need the strength of God. I don't believe here that it's a replacement spouse. I believe there's other people in the world that may like you. You are a beautiful person. You are pretty, you're gorgeous, you, you carry value. You have that spirit of anointing of Esther. You have an anointing or, on you. You are a leader. You are owner of many things. But I don't believe that you will find the true love and the unconditional love. Because there is something about these, it's the purpose of these marriages, they, they have an assignment, they have a mandate. These marriages is not gonna take long. It's only because of your rebellion, your prideful, something you did not do that's pulling your husband away. Oh, when you drop those friends, your spouse is coming because it's the activation of the movement of the faith. Jesus, I'm gonna end here. Nothing can be taken away. Nothing can be added to God's word and taken away from his word. I can only give what you tell me to give. I am just your vessel. I am just a messaging angel. I am just a messenger. I am the one that said yes and the one that asked you, Father God, to cleanse me and heal me. Forgive me of the things that I have done because I have not always been right. You said sit at your right hand but until you make our enemies your footstool. And I know I have brought plenty of numbers up and I know you all can do the work and go back and, and seek after God and just sit at his feet. Have your praise and worship music on. I would have loved to have my praise and worship music, but I know they would flag me here. I would have loved to have it on um, here.
I'm just glad we got through this today. I may not be on tomorrow, but if the Lord give me something and he will, there's going to be breakthrough. There's going to be breakthrough. It's something about your obedience. It's not just the marriage. It's not just your partner. It's not just him, you and him coming together. It, it, it's something in the obedience nine, something about the number eight and nine, eight and nine. And you seeking God. For God will command his angels concerning you and your spouse. It's, it's a breakthrough in every other thing that God has for your life. Just loving him is not just going to church. Just because they don't see you going in a church building does not mean that God doesn't live in you. That he doesn't love you. That he doesn't forgive you. And you forgiving him. Forgive your spouses. Soften your heart. Because I know 524 means the heart and heart. But God also said nations, tribes, and I will tell you one day where that number came from. Nations, tribes, and people. And he highlighted that back to back to back. The, the Father, the Holy Spirit, there's a transformation taking place in all of us. And he just led me here for this ministry to deliver this to you for what he has been pouring into me. And there's so, so much. But I have children. I have other things. You know, God wants us to go out and enjoy this beautiful weather. It's spring summer then we still you know walk in his likeness let the people see his glory upon you let them see the let them see the miraculous miracle they are so surprised when they hear about the healing that God does this is a healing ministry this is a ministry to heal and mend loved ones unions I thank you all for fellowshipping in your prayers. I thank you all for your obedience and coming to agreement with God and following him. You will receive your answers. Oh, yeah. 611. It just came back. See? 611 mean answers that you are about to receive an answer. You are about to your answers. God doesn't like to be played with. So those are people that's playing with him and, 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 and playing with him. He is not pleased with that. That's why he said fake. There, There is women, some women, whoever those two women are, they're faking a pregnancy giving birth. But there is a birthing taking place. I know he told me I was about to give birth. So that is all. Nothing can be added to his word. You orchestrated this all so you have rule reign of the men you have full control over the ending of this fast father god you giving us strength and peace to continue on this fast fast you giving us the anointing um even the day three help us to finish strong help us to finish strong give us the clarity give your women your 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 brides to be um your women of god give them the knowing on how to move forward, the instruction, the revelation, make the revelation, the interpretation of the dreams and the visions and your word clear to us all. Clear. You said you're opening up our eyes, Father God. We're having a hearing in the in the spiritual sight. You are anointed. You are gifted. He is heightening those areas and you are protected here. This ministry is protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I can only do this with God. I cannot make these things up on my own. It's by women empowered women. It's by his grace and his mercy that I am here, that I am doing it. Bible after Bible. This one was the NIV. This one was the Easter, Easter Standard Version. The one I read, the Bible scripture of... Esther, and then you can go back also and read Habakkuk, what God is saying about Habakkuk 2 7. You can go back and read that for yourself. This has been long enough. I am grateful and pleased and honored. Thank you all again. Until next time, bye bye.